everybody, Stu, AG6AG. This video is the third in a four-part series on Go Kits, and we're looking at, guess what, antennas today. So, sit back, enjoy the show, and oh, if you think of it, hey, click on subscribe for me. It really helps me out. And uh, if you click on the notification icon, you'll be notified when I come out with new videos. So with that, no further ado, Go Kit Antenna. Hi everyone, it's Stu AG6AG and I'm excited today we're going to do the third in the four part video series of Go Kits. And uh, you know, today we are going to take a look at something that's near and dear to my heart. You know what it is? It's antennas. And I love antennas. Antennas are the one thing as amateur radio operators that we still get to play with. I mean, let's face it, uh, the electronics that are built into modern radios today are very difficult to work with, even if you have great electronic experience. So the thing we have to remember, of course, is our four items that we're taking as our rules, which is uh, weight, use, our budget, and what it takes to move them. And these are really important subjects because, hey, you've got to get this out to the field, you've got to get it set up, and you've got to be able to operate safely out there. Keyword, safely. What is the biggest obstacle to safety when you start getting stuff up high in the air that can fall down and land on somebody? That's a real safety issue there. So um, we're going to talk about safety and some of those things briefly, but I encourage you to study uh, safety in operating with antennas on the ARRL.org website. Now, uh, let's talk about easy, fast antennas, such as this HF uh, uh, vertical Easy to set up, inexpensive tripod, goes up low to the ground. If you can get on top of a hill or whatever, really great antenna. Nice low takeoff angle. This is a single band antenna. I believe it is a 20 meter. Uh, the uh, CW guys for uh, 20 meters at the Reagan Library for field day deployed this. It, they had it up in 15, 20 minutes. So this is a really quick in, uh, antenna to deploy. You know, some other choices, of course, a dipole. A dipole, you may not necessarily need a mass if you have trees around. Downside is with a dipole, you need to fasten it at both ends or at least have something up in the middle to hold it, and then you can do an inverted V. Uh, but you're still going to need to bring out some sort of mast. And masts are, eh, you know, that's an interesting subject, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Now, one of the things that uh, I like to deploy typically are ham sticks, but let's first talk a little bit about stuff you always need, regardless of the antenna that you're bringing out there, okay? You're probably going to need rope of some kind, guy rope, whatever. You're going to want some tape, some safety tape where you can go out with uh, uh, either red or yellow tape and wrap it around the antenna so you don't have uh, bystanders walking into it and stuff like that. And of course, you're going to need coax. Now, I tend to just throw these two bins in, and there's a third one I pull in, uh, throw in with even more stuff just as a standard deployment. Uh, I have the trailer so I can do that. I don't have to super plan ahead because I can just grab these three tubs and get them into the vehicle or into the trailer and have everything I probably would need to deploy. There's extra stuff in here, little adapters, 90 degree uh, uh, UHF connectors, all sorts of stuff like that that you're going to need for your deployment. Uh, but you also need a simple and easy setup to deploy. So let's talk about what I like to deploy uh, when I'm not going to be working for days or even a long time or I have a limited space that I can set up in uh, and I don't have a lot of uh, sideward room. And that would be ham sticks for HF or just a standard GP3 for VHF UHF. Now, if you never heard of a ham stick dipole, it is a product that is sold 
by MFJ, really a neat way to set up dipoles that are all mono bands. So you notice that I have two of them up here. Uh, one is a 40 and one is a 20. And I could apply, uh, deploy these both at the same time. I'm going to show later in the video how I do that as well. Uh, but these are easy to set up. Realistically, end to end, they're only, they're under 10 feet. Okay. So that's, uh, that's a pretty substantial savings on a 20 meter dipole when it's end to end under 10 feet. Obviously, these antennas are loaded. What I mean by loaded is they have coils on them to make them electrically longer than their physical length. Uh, this also, this method of doing it can cause them to have quite a high Q. High Q is a very narrow area of usual usable band to tune to. Um, now, I never have a problem because I use a tuner, an external tuner, which we show in our first video and talk about. But uh, in this particular case, uh, make sure that you get it as close as you can to where you're going to operate because a tuner is no substitute for a low SWR coming from the antenna itself. Okay. Now, um, you assemble these, basically, you notice I've got a couple wrenches here, I've got some frog tape. Notice over in the corner, too, that I actually have a uh, antenna analyzer. And after I get these up in the air, I always throw them on the antenna analyzer. Why? Hey, you know what? They're sitting in my closet. I haven't hooked these up in, God, sometimes months. And, uh, you know, things can happen. The coax sits in those tubs. The coax could loosen up or I could have damaged it on the last deployment and not known it. Okay, so using an SWR uh, meter, an antenna analyzer, is an important part of your setup. And yes, I know you can check SWR with a regular old meter, much less expensive. I know we're talking budget here, but this makes it easy. Before I even transmit on that antenna, I can look at its status and I think that is the benefit of using the antenna analyzer. Uh, you also see I've got some guy ropes. You know, the golden rule here is if you're putting something in the air and it's more than about 10 feet up, uh, you probably want to guy it. And even if it is only 10 feet up, you might want to guy that as well. Uh, because uh, you never know when a large wind can come up and it can blow this stuff over fairly easy. So you need that additional support. Strongly recommend it, okay? Um, now, basically I need some sort of mast. So in this particular case, I have this nice little MFJ tri, uh, tripod. Now, originally this tripod was the 18 foot tripod model and I've had it for years. And it has fallen over, it has over periods of time had stuff break on it, um, and I've constantly come back to repair it. And as I repaired it, I changed it. I wanted to make it longer or more stable or whatever. So uh, there are some modifications. Uh, this now is theoretically capable of going up about to about 25 to 28 feet. The reality of it is the way that I use this tripod, it's only good to about 20, 22 feet, but it's a solid 20, 22 feet. Um, it's much more stable than the one that I originally purchased from MFJ. Uh, however, you still need to guy it, okay? I actually uh, also use sand weights around the tripod. Um, now, you notice that there's this small little section up at the top with a little black cap on it. That is so thin. That is someplace around, I believe, uh, oh, um, um, uh, a, a three quarters of an inch thick. That it's almost too small to mount to. So, I actually use that as a uh, thing that I can slide the PVC over that I have on the top of these, uh, or at the junction point or the mounting point of these antennas. 
Uh, and if you look here, what you see is I have that in my hand there, in my left hand, I'm holding on to the bottom of that PVC pipe. And you notice also I have extended that top portion. I'm going to lean it over to the side and I'm going to slide that in. And what we're going to end up with is that just sitting over that. And you see me with my uh, oh, uh, uh, painter's tape, my frog tape, and I'm actually taping the base of that to the antenna mast itself and that will keep it from turning on me okay uh, and then of course lower down at the bottom I can loosen that clamp and actually rotate the whole thing to change the direction of the antenna because remember it's a dipole we got a giant sideways donut so I may want to turn it towards who I want to talk to now there it is in the air, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's talk a little bit about what's up there on the top. And what you can see is at the very top, I've attached that GP3, and that GP3 is going to do VHF, UHF, and right underneath it, right, is that dipole. And that dipole right there is the 20-meter ham sticks, and it is actually allowing me to go directional because I can turn it down at the bottom. And you can see the spread. We're at about nine and a half feet in length on this antenna. Um, what's left now that's up in the air? Check the SWR. You want to check the SWR on any antenna you put on the air before you hook it to your radio. So let's talk more about the stuff you got to load up with you. Here's my bucket of masts. I have several masts in this bucket. Uh, I have jointable um, fiberglass masting that I can basically go up to, oh, around 35 feet maybe. Um, Safety-wise, uh, probably 20, 25, depending on how much weight I have at the top. And there's an important thing to take into consideration is how much weight am I putting up on the top there. So you want to evaluate that as well. What you can barely see, you see this carpet's in the way, but you can see that uh, metal panel there. Uh, that is actually the drive-over portion of a, um, a mast pipe that I can slide a really neat mast into uh, and uh, that mast actually there's two of them sitting up on top of that eight foot wide shelf and you can see they're really about nine and a half feet long when they're compressed but these little darlings are 50 foot mast they'll actually theoretically do 50 feet Realistically, they only really do about 40, 42 feet at max. Most of the time, I don't take it much over 35. And again, they have that small little portion up at the top, that really thin thing up at the end uh, that I use to slide those PVC pipes over. Um, <laughs> and I've got to show you, this This particular picture really doesn't do the mass size justice. Here it is attached to the roof of my car. And if you look closely behind there, you're going to see a 9-foot ladder. And, uh, excuse me, an 8-foot ladder that I use to deploy it. Why? Because it's a lot easier to stand this thing up and get it into that mount with it fully retracted and then I can do everything I need to do from uh, the ladder as far as extending it up one piece at a time. Now um, let's take a look at this little gem deployed along with a couple other things. So there we are. This was a Boy Scout event, and uh, here we are fully deployed. Uh, you notice we have two separate guy ropes up on the uh, big mask, which is deployed at 35 feet right now. And up at the very top, we have two dipoles connected, two of those MFJ dipoles. Now, uh, you notice that they're 180 degrees off from each other. Right? And that's so they don't interfere with each other either if I choose to use them at the same time. Okay, The idea there is you won't get an interference pattern. They're actually on two separate pieces of coax. Okay, um, 
And you'll also notice that over on the side there, I have a guy rope, okay, or a uh, rope to rotate the antenna. So I can take that and I can use it to turn the antennas. So if I decide that I'm on 20 and I want to go to 40, I can turn 40 in the same direction the 20 was and move the 20 out of phase. Also, you'll notice on my original tripod that I showed earlier, I have a GP3 on here. And one of the cooler things as we move back down is you'll see that this uh, tripod that I was talking about over here uh, has weights, that sand weights on the bottom of it. And you can't really tell, but it's actually bungee corded to the uh, two easy ups that are bungee corded together. So we've got pretty good um, safety with that. On the big antenna, you notice we have two full sets of guys. Um, and why do we do that? Well, because we want to keep that antenna stable in the wind. And again, we don't want anyone getting hurt. Wind can blow hard enough, you can stretch that fiberglass, believe it or not, far enough that you could have a failure. So you need to be really careful of that. Anyway, um, now, where do we go from here, though? Uh, great question. Let's talk about some of the bigger deployments that are out there. Let's talk about antenna trailers. So, here we have a picture of an antenna, uh, antenna trailer that is uh, uh, owned by KK6UE and uh, was really uh, set up and built. This was middle process of its build out. We took it out for deployment for a Boy Scout event. Uh, but uh, you can see right there, uh, that little unit right there is just amazing. It's got a marvelous, marvelous uh, uh, height to it. I believe it'll height up to about 50 feet. Uh, and on top of that, you know, it's designed, it doesn't need guys. Uh, you notice that it has lots of structural stuff around the base of it. So that keeps everything from moving around. Um, we're going to do a special on antenna trailers coming up after we finish this whole thing. Uh, and uh, uh, special thanks also to um, W6NCT, who is the person that actually was building this at the time. Um, we're going to ask him and KK6UE to show us their trailers. Uh, and speaking of N6 uh, or W6NCT, here's his trailer. Okay, now this is neat. This is what we deploy at field day. Okay, and uh, this particular unit here actually has multiple antennas on it in this shot. Um, I believe this is capable to 75 feet, and I'm sure he's going to correct me in his video or in the comments. Um, but uh, this thing deploys in about an hour to two hours. Uh, the other trailer, uh, it, it deploys, if you know what you're doing, in about an hour. Now, of course, you have the, all the additional time that goes on when you're trying to put together uh, the antennas and everything else that goes on here. So to be fair, if you take a look at uh, the uh, uh, ham sticks that we're talking about over here, these actually total deployment time with assembling the antennas is about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, okay, which is pretty good. When you start getting into this setup, uh, this is a little bit different. I could be taking as long as uh, 45 minutes to an hour to get that deployed, right? So we talk about uh, deployments um, in uh, all sorts of stuff, right? Uh, but again, we have to worry about our weight. We have to know what our use is going to be. Are we going to be going out and doing HF? If we are, we need to figure out a HF antenna solution. Uh, if all we're going to do is UHF, VHF, that's fairly straightforward. We can get, get, get away with a lot with that. We're a little bit more refined. We need a little bit more space and we need a little bit more uh, safety with the HF stuff just because the antennas are bigger. We also have to consider budget, right? Vertical antenna can cost three, four figures. You know, it just depends on what you're buying. 
Um, in contrast, those uh, ham sticks, they're about 80 bucks a piece. They're not real expensive. But you've got to buy a tripod or build a tripod or come up with a tripod solution. And that can be any place from uh, something as cheap, getting it up 10 feet off the air with uh, a speaker uh, stand for concerts to as expensive as big you know, uh, fiberglass masks that go up in the air with mounting and everything else. And again, uh, you know, how many people are you going to have to help you deploy? And how hard is it going to be, number four, to transport? And that's something that we always have to think about as well. Um, you know, it's uh, if all you've got is uh, a very, very small compact car, it's hard to get stuff set up and moved for that. So with that, that pretty much covers antennas with go kits. I think the, the last thing I want to touch on, of course, is um, a lot of guys tell me, well, I'll just take my antenna down at the house and I'll use that. Well, if it's an emergency, you don't know what you need to do or how fast you need to do it. So um, kind of make sure that your go kit antennas are dedicated to the go kit, okay? Um, of course, for an event, you have lots of time to plan. You can take it down and do it. If you're deployed in an emergency, you need to get up and going fast, okay? And that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, you know, if you're only going to be deployed a short period of time, then a tripod and maybe a uh, dipole or a tripod and the dipoles that we showed there, the ham sticks, well, is a great solution. It's also a great solution to get onto the air fast. Uh, let's say you're deploying for an emergency. Well, the first thing you're going to do is get the ham sticks up in the air and communicate. And the second thing you're going to do is consider a better antenna. Uh, and maybe you've loaded out so you can set up that second antenna. It may take a couple hours to get that second antenna set up, but then you can transition to it for the rest of the event. So, again, this is all about planning and figuring out where you want to be. And most importantly, it's about going out and setting it up and tearing it down and setting it up and tearing it down and learning how to do it and do it right. And also learning how to do it and do it safely. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Stu, AG6AG, 73. Well, there you have it. Uh, you notice that I use those ham sticks a lot because they're very convenient and they're easy to put together. Uh, my second choice, obviously, would be a wire dipole. I think that uh, uh, wire dipoles, if you have the space to set it up and the opportunity to do that, is the way to go. Um, and, uh, you know, once you get past that, you know, you're getting into verticals and you're getting into, uh, or possibly even Yaggies, you're getting into larger mast assemblies. So, um, in a remote deployment, it isn't necessarily the hot ticket to go with a real high-end antenna. But that's just my opinion. One other thing I wanted to mention in closing is deploying that 50-foot mast, uh, you're not going to do that by yourself, um, especially if you've got mild winds uh, to heavy winds. You need some help on those guy ropes as you're bringing it up because you need to try to maintain some kind of stability as you're climbing that ladder to get those antennas up in the air. Um, and of course, remember, if that thing falls down, it could hurt itself or hurt you or hurt other people. So be careful, obey all the rules about electric lines and everything else, even though it's a temporary deployment, all that still counts. And <laughs> thank you, FCC. We probably need to do an exposure evaluation as well once we get it in the air. So keep that in mind, too. With that, my name's Stu, AG6AG. And hey, if you like the video, click the like icon. Any questions or comments, make them in the comments down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. 73 to all, and I hope to hear you on the air.